All right, looking just quickly then at your cellular adaptations. Um, your book does a really nice job of laying these all out, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this lecture going through them, but these are the adaptation categories. So the first one is atrophy, a decrease in cell size, all kinds of things that can cause atrophy, uh, simple disuse. Um, if uh, you stop, if you've been exercising, exercising, and then suddenly you stop, your muscle cells will start to shrink. So they get smaller. They don't necessarily die. They just get smaller. Um, certain loss of hormones. Uh, women who go through menopause will see the atrophy of the uterus. The ovaries will start to shrink. Um, that's due to the lack of estrogen production. Um, lack of nutrients or lack of blood flow can cause atrophy to occur and just aging in general. And your manifestations of atrophy are pretty straightforward with lack of size of muscle cells, the strength and force of contraction will shrink. As cells shrink, their functions diminish. And so again, it may not be total loss. Even in, um, you know, during menopause, you may still have some low levels of hormone production from the ovarian cells, even though they've shrunk dramatically. But you're certainly not going to see a woman postmenopausal who's going to um, see the normal functions of the uh, thickening of the uterine wall and the menstruation process that all will go away so a lot of the function diminishes or drops off dramatically um, and be careful with atrophy we are really when we use the term atrophy we're really talking about cellular atrophy not organ atrophy if an entire organ shrinks that's in something entirely different and often is not reversible Arguably, things like menopause are not terribly reversible either, although with an increase in hormones at certain points in time, you can bring those, those cells back up to functioning. We've certainly seen that happen. If you watch the media and the 60 and 70-year-old woman having babies.